Hello there, I'm wearing a shirt and this is a storyteller's guide to the universe. So I wanted to do a kind of like series of episodes where I am exploring the craft of writing. I'm learning a lot about my own writing process and writing in general, some of the theory behind it. And as I was doing that, I wanted to kind of share my experience and share my journey as a writer. So to do that, I've done this little series that I'm going to be calling the Storyteller's Guide to the Universe. I'm going to be exploring kind of the different aspects of writing and story crafting as I explore it a bit more to improve my own writing as I work on my novel, maybe? We'll see. This first episode is kind of more of an intro than anything else, really. And in being more of a intro than anything, it's just kind of a nebulous idea of what is a story. You're going to be able to tell that this is kind of pre-written. I'm going to make it look like I'm not writing off a script when I kind of am. Uh, I'm going to try and make it as natural as possible, but we'll see how it goes. Let's get into it. What is a story? Well, at its core, a story or a narrative is a telling of a true or fictitious event or connected series of events recounted by a narrator to a narratee. Now, that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. It's just person A describing to person B something that may or may not have happened. And when you break it down to that simplistic level, you can start to see how storytelling has become such a ubiquitous and important aspect of human culture. How easy is it to imagine early humans recounting where they spotted a dangerous predator and telling the story of their encounter? It's then not a stretch to imagine how that becomes an important aspect of society, how that story evolves to warn others of dangers in the world, and how that small group can begin to define themselves and be defined find by the stories they tell but that is something we don't have to imagine because we actually have evidence for it many works of art and literature in their purest form tell a story these stories and myths of ancient civilizations survived through to the modern day because they were important enough to be carved into long-lasting materials and those stories go on to help us understand the cultures they came from the ancient egyptians greeks romans indians their stories all survive in various forms but i think more importantly is what stories tell us about ourselves and what we wish to teach future generations many stories are used as parables as emphasis to illustrate points. Many of you will recognise these stories. They're fairy tales. The fairy tales we tell our children. They're the films we watch, the games we play, and the books we read. They are the stories the ancient civilizations carved into stone and passed down the generations. They teach us right from wrong, ways to behave, and how to be safe in an ever-changing world. And for me, that's what's so special about stories. They're the earliest and purest form of entertainment, and as much as they continue to evolve, they never truly change. They will always be how society communicates with itself and shares its experiences. Stories at their core have meaning. They tell us about ourselves, the world and its history. They inspire us to be better or to share our own experiences with the world. I'm going to read for you the opening passage of Joseph Campbell's 1949 book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. We're not going to go into the details of the theory of the monomyth today, but I want to share with you the way he describes how myths and their narrative shape our world. Throughout the inhabited world, in all times and under every circumstance, the myths of man have flourished, and they have been the living inspiration of whatever else may have appeared out of the activities of the human body and mind. It would not be too much to say that myth is a secret opening through which inexhaustible energies of the cosmos pour into human cultural manifestation. Religions, philosophies, arts, the social forms of primitive and historic man, prime discoveries in science and technology, the very dreams that blister sleep, boil up from the basic magic ring of myth. The wonder is that the characteristic efficacy to touch and inspire the deep creative centres dwells within the smallest nursery fairy tale, as the flavour of the ocean is contained in a droplet, or the whole mystery of life within the egg of a flea. For the symbols of mythology are not manufactured. They cannot be ordered, invented, or permanently suppressed. They are spontaneous productions of the psyche, and each bears within it, undamaged, 
the germ power of its source. I think that's a great passage, and it really speaks to the importance of stories to all our cultures and societies. I'm sure you may have noticed the language within that passage was very emotive, and it was chosen for the imagery it creates. And that's because narrative and storytelling is a highly aesthetic art form and has evolved a number of important aesthetic elements. These elements include familiar concepts such as narrative structure, an identifiable beginning, middle, and end, a focus on temporality, including retention of the past and attention to present and anticipation of the future, character and characterization, narrator voice, and literary trope. These are elements of the narrative structure that I'm going to look at in more detail in later episodes, but there's one thing that's almost universally shared by all stories, and that will be the focus of our next episode. So tune in next time because you and I, we're about to have some serious conflict.